It's so dark. We are going to do things a little bit differently today. Today is Good Friday. It is a special day. And uh, we thought about all kinds of different, you know, skits we might do and things like that, just trying to do something a little bit different. I think uh, most everybody has had enough of, well, all of this stuff that's been going on. And we're ready to celebrate. And yet we have this day where traditionally there's a lot of weight spiritually that's attached to this day, things that we feel inside that sometimes build sorrow within us, eventually to come to the anticipated glory of God as we celebrate on Easter Sunday. So I thought we'd do something a little bit different today, which is why those lights are down right now. There's purpose behind it. I want to do as much as I can to set an atmosphere this morning as we begin this. We are going to take communion in just a moment as I'm reading Scripture. So this service today, every word that I am bringing this morning is the Word of God. Not one word will be my own. And we are not going to pause as we often do in the middle of a service. I finish a message and we kind of do communion as a separate thing. We are going to do it as it comes up in the Scripture. And we are going to begin with the Lord's Supper. Father, this morning we want to thank you for your goodness on this Good Friday. We thank you, Lord, because you made the way. We thank you, Lord, because we know how the story ends. This is to your glory, Father, that we come here today to remember, even, Lord, to celebrate, even, Lord, to hang on to you, to be with you, to draw close to you. And so, Father, we we invite you to be close with us this morning. Would you make yourself known? Would you allow us to sense your presence in a way where where we have a, a tangible notion that you are there? Move amongst us today, Lord. We invite you. Touch us afresh and anew. Draw us in to a more intimate place of worship this morning. As we abandon ourselves to You, to Your Word, to Your praise. All for Your glory, Lord. You are worthy. We thank You this Good Friday. In Jesus' name we pray. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord? Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him had he not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
I tell you, I will not drink this fruit from the vine from now until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus crossed to the Kidron Valley with his disciples and entered the grove of olive trees. Judas, the betrayer, knew this place because Jesus had often gone there with his disciples. The leading priests and Pharisees had given Judas a contingent of Roman soldiers and temple guards to accompany him. Now, with blazing torches, lanterns, and weapons, they arrived at the olive grove. 
Jesus fully realized all that was going to happen to him, so he stepped forward to meet them. Who are you looking for? He asked. Jesus, the Nazarene, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing there with them. As Jesus said, I am he, they all drew back and fell to the ground. Once more, he asked them, who are you looking for? And again, they replied, Jesus, the Nazarene. I told you that I am he, Jesus said, and since I am the one you want, let these others go. He did this to fulfill his own statement. I did not lose a single one of those you have given me. Then Simon Peter drew a sword and slashed off the right ear of Malchus, the high priest's slave. But Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back in its sheath. Shall I not drink from the cup of suffering the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their commanding officer, and the temple guards arrested Jesus and tied him up. First they took him to Annas, since he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest at the time. Caiaphas was the one who had told the other Jewish leaders, it's better that one man should die for the people. Where can I go but to the cross, to the cross? For there my shame you have washed away. Where can I go? But to the cross, to the cross. For there you gave up your life for me. You gave your life for me. You stretch your arms out wide. I lift my hands up high to my Savior. You stretch your arms out wide. I lift my hands up high to my Savior. So, Lord, I run to the cross, to the cross. Surrender all to my Savior King. Be my everything. You stretch your arms out wide. I lift my hands up high to my Savior. You stretch your arms out wide. I lift my hands up high to my Savior. Chains are broken. Chains has fallen all my sins are gone chains are broken shame has fallen all my sins are gone you stretched your arms out wide I lift my hands up high to my Savior. You stretch your arms out wide. I lift my hands up high to my Savior. 
Chains are broken, shame has fallen, all my sins are gone. Chains are broken, shame has fallen, all my sins are gone. Jesus' trial before Caiaphas ended in the early hours of the morning. He was then taken to the headquarters of the Roman governor. His accusers didn't go inside because it would defile them and they wouldn't be able to celebrate the Passover. So Pilate, the governor, went out to them and he asked, What is your charge against this man? We wouldn't have handed him over to you if he weren't a criminal, they retorted. Then take him away and judge him by your own law, Pilate told them. Only the Romans are permitted to execute someone, the Jewish leaders replied. This fulfilled Jesus' prediction about the way he would die. Then Pilate went back into his headquarters and called for Jesus to be brought to him. Are you the king of the Jews, he asked him. And Jesus replied, is this your question or did others tell you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate reported. Your own people and their leading priests brought you to me for trial. Why? What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate said, so you are a king. Jesus responded, you say I am a king. Actually, I was born and came into this world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. What is truth? Pilate asked. He then went out again to the people and he told them, he's not guilty of any crime, but you have a custom of asking me to release one prisoner each year at Passover. Would you like me to release this king of the Jews? But they shouted back, No, not this man. We want Barabbas. saints adore thee casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee which word and art and evermore shall be. Holy, 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 though the darkness hides thee, though the eye of sinful man 
thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power and love and purity. Then Pilate had Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip. The soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put a purple robe on him. Hail, King of the Jews, they mocked as they slapped him across the face. Pilate went outside again and said to the people, I'm going to bring him out now to you, but understand clearly that I find him not guilty then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple road and robe, and Pilate said, Look, here is the man. When they saw him, the leading priests and temple guards began shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Take him yourselves and crucify him, Pilate said. I find him not guilty. The Jewish leaders replied, By our law, he ought to die because he called himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more frightened than ever. He took Jesus back into the headquarters and asked him again, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Why don't you talk to me, Pilate demanded. Do you not realize that I have the power to release you or crucify you? Then Jesus said, You would have no power over me at all unless it were given to you from above. So the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Then Pilate tried to release him, but the Jewish leader shouted, If you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar's. Anyone who declares himself a king is a rebel against Caesar. When they said this, Pilate brought Jesus out to them again. Then Pilate sat down on the judgment seat on the platform that is called the stone pavement here in Hebrew called Gabbatha. It was now about noon on the day of preparation for the Passover, and Pilate said to the people, Look, here is your king. Away with him, they yelled. Away with him. Crucify him. What? Crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the leading priest shouted back. Then Pilate turned Jesus over to them to be crucified. I sing for my Redeemer the maker of the stars and sea. You look upon my suffering and came for me. 
rejected and despised you hung alone upon that sinner's hill my savior's hands bled for my peace and hold me still jesus be my savior jesus be my lord jesus be my savior be my all in all. We take this sweet communion, remembering the price you paid. We lift the cup of suffering exchanged for grace it wasn't nails that kept him there that held our maker's hands in place it was a love that overcame our sin and shame Jesus be my Savior Jesus be my Lord Jesus be my Savior be my all in all Jesus be my Savior, Jesus be my Lord, Jesus be my Savior, be my all in all, be my all in all. So they took Jesus away. Carrying the cross by himself, he went to the place called the place of the skull, in Hebrew called Golgotha. There they nailed him to the cross. Two others were crucified with him, one on either side with Jesus in between them. Pilate posted a sign on the cross that read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek, so that many people could read it. Then the leading priests objected and said to Pilate, change it from King of the Jews to, he said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate replied, no, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided, divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robe, but it was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said, rather than tearing it apart, let's throw dice for it. They fulfilled the scripture that says, they divided my garments among themselves and threw dice for my clothing. So that is what they did. Standing near the cross, where Jesus' mother with his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the di disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from then on, the disciple took her into his home. Jesus knew that his mission was now fulfilled, and to fulfill Scripture, he said, I'm thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. 
when Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It was the day of preparation, and the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies hanging there the next day, which was the Sabbath, and a very special Sabbath because it was the Passover week. So they asked Pilate to hasten their deaths by ordering that their legs be broken. Then their bodies could be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. So they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water flowed out. This report is from an eyewitness giving an accurate account. He speaks the truth so that you also may continue to believe. These things happened in fulfillment of the scriptures that say not one of his bones will be broken, and they will look upon the one they pierced. Afterward, Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus because he feared the Jewish leaders, asked Pilate for permission to take down Jesus' body. When Pilate gave permission, Joseph came and took the body away. With him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night. He brought about 75 pounds of perfume anointed and and made from myrrh and aloes. Following Jewish burial custom, they wrapped Jesus' body with the spices in a long sheet of linen cloth. The place of crucifixion was near a garden where there was a new tomb never before used. And so because it was the day of preparation for the Jewish Passover, and since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Good Friday. How can one describe such a day? The wrongdoing of all humanity putting to an end an innocent man, the Son of God. This is the story of Jesus' death by way of a cross, all in one moment bringing death to the bright light of our future. He never stopped loving us, and yet this is the incredible part of it. Our sin stopped his heart. Our sin drove the nails firmly in the hands of God. All along, these were the plans. We told ourselves that we were in control, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. The brutal beating, the inhuman flogging, the naked humiliation. Heaven watched and saw it all. Our rebellion, our guilt, our shame, erasing the very notion of reconciling us with God, our sin and our debt, overcoming Jesus. Here is our king, obliterated. The enemy laughing, his plans unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of freedom rising. Now God's people are utterly broken. Behold the chains of mortality. Yes, this is what is true. We had heard the stories of old. The lost are found, the blind can see, the weak are made strong. But now we are witnesses to this reality. God is dead. We'd almost believed there is a way of redemption. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a peace beyond understanding. Now we know better. For us, we can say that God is encapsulated in this one realization. The single greatest sacrifice in human history is finished. How clearly we can see it. So what's so good about Good Friday? Just one thing, that the blood of Jesus can reverse the curse of sin and raise the dead to life. How clearly we can see 
It is finished. The single greatest sacrifice in human history encapsulated in this one realization. We can say that God is for us. Now we know better. There is a peace beyond understanding. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a way of redemption. We had almost believed God is dead, but now we are witnesses to this reality. The weak are made strong, the blind can see, the lost are found. We had heard the stories of old, yes, this is what is true. The chains of mortality utterly broken. Behold, freedom rising. Now God's people are unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of the enemy laughing. His plans obliterated. Here is our King, Jesus, overcoming our sin and our debt, reconciling us with God, erasing the very notion of our rebellion, our guilt, our shame. Heaven watched and saw it all, the naked humiliation, the inhuman flogging, the brutal beating, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. We told ourselves that we were in control. All along, these were the plans firmly in the hands of God. Our sin drove the nails, our sin stopped his heart, and yet this is the incredible part of it. He never stopped loving us. The bright light of our future all in one moment bringing death to death by way of a cross. This is the story of Jesus, the Son of God, an innocent man putting to an end the wrongdoing of all humanity. How can one describe such a day? Good Friday. There was a moment when the lights went out When death had claimed its victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history There on a cross they made for sinners for every curse his blood atoned One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn what sacrifice was made as the heavens roll? All hail King Jesus! All hail the Lord of heaven and earth! All hail King Jesus! All hail the Savior of the world. There was a moment when the sky lit up, a flash of light breaking through. When all was lost, he crossed eternity. King of life was on the move For in a dark, cold tomb Where our Lord, what Lord was laid One miraculous breath 
and we're forever changed. All hail King Jesus. All hail the Lord of heaven and earth. All hail King Jesus. All hail the Savior. bow before the King of Kings. Let every tongue confess that He is Lord. Lift up your shout. Let us join with all of heaven singing glory. Singing holy. Cry out holy. Singing holy, all hail King Jesus, all hail the Lord of heaven and earth, all hail King Jesus, all hail the same. That day 2,000 years ago was dark. It was filled with pain and tragedy. But for us today, it means something very, very different. For us today, it's a reminder of sacrifice, yes. But it is also a reminder of the anticipation that is ours. We know how this story ends. We know our King is coming. We know that victory is His. We know that in three days He rose again from the grave. He has conquered sin. He has conquered death. And this is why the symbol of our faith is an empty cross. As you go from this place today and reflect on this Easter season over the next couple of days, on the weight of sacrifice and all that Christ accomplished for us, I invite you to let your hearts rise up. Let your hearts find and see His glory in this. These days are not dark, but rather they are filled with a great and everlasting light that cannot be undone. It's a goodness that cannot be lost. It is a love that cannot be broken and a life that will never end. Join us as we celebrate this Sunday, as we pour out thanksgiving for all that He has done for us. It is finished. Father, I want to thank you, Lord, because we can come even in days like these where we are called to remember such great tragedy, such, such pain, such overwhelming circumstance, and yet we do it with the light of your glory on our souls, Lord. We do it with the redemption that we hold in our hearts, the salvation that comes to us as a gift from you. Thank you, Father, we declare today. In one voice, with all of our hearts in unison, we say thank you for what you have done for our sake. None of us is worthy, Lord, 
None of us measures up. Not one of us is good enough for this, Father. But You are. You are glory. You are perfect. You are wonderful and too beautiful to even imagine, Father. You have authority over all things. And You have accomplished the greatest work of all time. You have destroyed death for all eternity, Father. We thank You. We glorify You. We praise Your name today. We lift up Your name today. We hope that You are made famous in our world today, Lord. We declare that there is one God and You are Him. We thank You, Lord, for all that You are, for all that You've done, for all that You are doing, and Lord, all that You will do still yet to come for us. We thank You, Lord, that You are who You say You are. Praise the Lord. All glory is yours. In Jesus' name, we pray.